I'll see you around. Thank you. Can you just get on your computer? Mm -hmm. so you get on your... Mine? Yeah. It's like using a fork. Huh? You mean this? Is there some of like, two viruses on it that you don't know about yet? Yeah. like a MacBook Pro. The new list will look like 64 gigs of RAM. Yeah. Have you tried running solver stuff yet? Do some like add on or something. I don't know. I think we use them virtually not. Never tried. I think we were doing that. What else? Yeah, I did it for Steam. Steam. I could play Windows games. Wait, for real? Yeah. And you know what? Yeah, but then I got PC. You have a desktop? The thing is, we want to say, I've been in. You can go over here. If you go on the virtual number of condition, it's still yeah. to that probably. And then just the crashes. So you've already crashed in the left for me. It's actually it never crashed for me. I just it could it could um it could use it. But um I was just nervous. I just put on the church to on me. I don't all the Workshops are happening. So, right now, there's been two nights. I just had another workshop. Please do. Thank you. Stay. I switched a lot to the library and then I ran. Honestly, me too. I think I closed it. But it was like, I think that's it's a board. Probably, yeah. I was like, oh, I'll pass it back. Oh, yeah, so it must be. I was trying to put Alexis and Tina. Yeah. Oh, so I got to. Oh, she knows scoops for me. Like, we were at the same hub. Like, we were in circuits. It's about like a year ago. Oh, wow. That's so it's been so long. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Did you see my question? Like, it's the one with the six meters. Oh, yeah. I was just like, starting to color it blue, and then everybody's going to color it yellow. I was like, oh, okay. Why don't we ever walk to this class? I'm going to stay from the same class. All three of us. Huh? Sorry. Yeah, I love this day. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. 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 Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was yapping. 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 Oh, I was
You're just thinking of you have to be able to buy it. Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. Um, nice background. Yours. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, right? yeah. I was just like, I used to bring this up. Oh, cool. Hold it in the studio with the movie. It's like it's slow. Like, I'm just like, I'm done. I just watch it. Yeah, I was like, I started just watching Pony with Rita. Yeah, the one that was like the first one. I literally can run like solid and not like the bags. Yeah, I don't have nothing like that. I actually like Still cool. All right, same. Yeah. And I'm like, I do not date, so like, it's like, it's sort of like, it's a random one to one to about. So since it's like it's actually not bad. Yeah. All right, it's uh four o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, good afternoon, everyone. How's uh how's everyone doing today? Have a good weekend, long weekend. Um okay. Um so uh first thing I want to update you guys on is the weightless situation. So I uh, took a look today. Um, I'm looking at kind of our enrollment and, and it looks like it's going to be uh, top five on the wait list. So your positions one through five on the wait list. Um, I think, I think it's, it's going to be, I think, I think it's going to be pretty good, pretty good chance you'll be able to get in. Um, uh, if you're beyond that six through, um, I think it was beyond that. I think, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try, but it's not looking good. So, uh, if you're kind of beyond that fifth spot on the wait list, I would definitely look at, uh, look at other options for uh, okay. Um, announce other announcement is that homework one. Uh, I posted that on Friday, um, so that is on on the Canvas site. So that is due a week from today. Uh, we should finish everything up today that you need for the homework. So you know you uh, should be good to go for that. Um, I plan on finishing this this the set of lectures today. But then um, yeah, homework one posted today due next uh, next two. Um, Oh, if you if I guess going back to the waitlist thing, if if um I, I haven't had a chance to look at everyone's situation yet, but if you are kind of further down on the waitlist um and and you know you really do need this class or nothing else really fits, you know, come talk to me and then you know I can kind of use that to kind of push for uh push for more students from from the class. But um yeah, so just just come talk to me if you're kind of beyond 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 the fifth spot. All right. Uh, any questions I can answer before we get started for today? Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so let's let's uh, we're gonna pick up where we left off on last Thursday. So last Thursday, you know, we kind of had our first, um, you know, um, I guess real lecture on, on optimization. So we kind of defined a lot of terms that day. Uh, so first thing I wanted to do today was just kind of recap a little bit, kind of the most important points from last Thursday. And then for the majority of the time today, we're gonna spend doing uh, just one example. So we're gonna do one example. Uh, I'm just going to work it to death. So uh, hopefully you'll kind of see the whole process from. But we're kind of still in this kind of beginning phase of the class, which you know I call kind of introduction to optimization. Okay. So there are three kind of, um, I would say, aspects or three, um, you know, parts to an optimization problem that we, we went over last Thursday. But I, I really want you guys to kind of, you know, really nail it down in, in your guys' heads, you know, uh, moving forward. Right. So the first thing we discussed was the design variables. So if you remember from last Thursday, our design variables, those were the, um, you know, parameters of our physical system that we have control over, that we can tune their values to that change the performance of our system.
Remember, the design variables are, are they're kind of the star of our optimization. So they're they're ultimately what we want to solve, right? So our goal in every optimization problem is to find the best values or the optimal values for these design variables. So the design variables, you know, oftentimes um, I think the easiest thing to visualize is that the design variables are things like physical dimensions, like the length, the width, diameter, um, things like things like that. Uh, but you know, of course, they can extend to other other features of your engineering design as well. Number two, the second aspect of an optimization problem we went over was the idea of a constraint. And so constraints place uh, uh, place limitations on the admissible values or the um, you know the valid values of the uh, of the design variables. But then any kind of design, uh, engineering design, um, you know, there there are constraints. You know, a lot of times they're just physical constraints, just based on just the size of the of the space that you're uh, designing for. Uh, but also they can be, you know, you place constraints on, you know, having non-negative numbers, things, things like that. Okay. There were two types of constraints that we talked about. Uh, we had equality constraints and inequality constraints. And of course, you know, those were those were characterized based on the mathematical formulation of the constraint itself. Okay? Uh, sometimes a constraint takes the form of, you know, an equal and equals relationship. Sometimes they take the form of an inequality relationship. And the third, the third aspect that we went over, um, you know, that this is what we covered at the end of the class was the idea of an objective function. So objective function is a mathematical uh, way for us to basically quantify performance of our system. But in most engineering design problems, you know, there there are you know a whole host of uh, you know different combinations of design variables that will satisfy the constraints. Um, but you know, usually only one of those um, sets of design variables will give us an optimal result. Right? And so the objective function is kind of our tool or our mathematical way to assess you know which designs are better than the others. So in any optimization problem, you're going to have all three of these of these aspects. You're going to have design variables. You're going to have constraints. Um, sometimes you know the constraints will be uh, very lax, and so um, but they they are there usually. So most of the time, you know, we we uh, place a constraint for non-negativity. Okay, 
And then we have to have an objective function. The objective function tells us, you know, which designs are better than the okay. All right. So with that said, you know, let's uh, let's let's do an example. Um, and then through this example, you'll be able to see all three of these kind of um, in, in motion. But before we uh, get to that, are there just any questions on, on the recap here? Okay. All right. Let's get to an example. Okay. Um, so this so this is the example I kind of uh, was talking about constantly last week, but we'll actually put some numbers to it today. So let's say that we're designing uh, a structural column um, of two viewer sheet. Let's go ahead and draw it. Here, okay. The column has a certain length. L. If we look at the cross section, We have a tube, so it's a it's a hollow. It's basically a hollow cylinder. And the way we're going to parameterize this uh, this cylinder is that we're going to have um, a, a variable for the inner diameter. So that distance uh, between kind of the inner parts of the of the tube, we'll call that um, lowercase d. And the other parameter that we're going to have is the thickness of the of the, of the uh, column as well. Right. So this column, um, you know, one, once it's put in practice, has to support a load of twenty five hundred newtons. So we're going to have a compressive load on the on the column. And the value is going to be twenty five hundred newtons. <laughs> In addition, the, the material for the column has already been chosen. So there's uh, there's already a set of parameters that are already kind of fixed in the design. If you remember, if you remember from last week, you know, um, any kind of any kind of variable that you don't have control over that are kind of fixed, we call those we call those fixed parameters or fixed um, variables. Okay. okay. So let's see. So the length, the length is actually already determined. That's determined by the uh, by the height of the building itself. So the length we'll say is 250 centimeters. The density, the density of the material in the column is given by uh, 0 0.0025 newtons per centimeter square. Or send me your cube, excuse me, to do. We have the Young's modulus, and so the Young's modulus is a uh, an expression of the strength of the material. The 0 0.85 times 10 to the 6 Newton per centimeter square. And one other thing that we have is the yield strength of the material. Which is 500 Newton per centimeter. So this one right here, let me label these. This is for top one for length. This one is density. Uh, second one is it's weight density. Uh, so kind of be careful about that. So it's it's not mass density. It's it's actually weight density. E here is the Young's modulus or elastic modulus. Sigma F here, this is the unit.
All right, so all those parameters are fixed. And so, you know, those, those ones we can't really do anything about. Um, the parameters that aren't fixed at this moment are the diameter, D, and the thickness, T. Okay. So our goal with this optimization is to find You want to find the optimal values for D and T and our objective in, in, in this design here is to minimize the, the cost. So we have a two-dimensional optimization problem, two design variables here, um, and our main objective here is just to minimize the, the cost. So single single objective, two variable um, optimization. All right. Any questions on on this so far? All right. So let's let's talk uh, let's talk constraints. Usually for the for optimization problems like this, the constraints will be given to you. Uh, so probably probably I should have given you the constraints before I gave you the objective, but um, but these are the constraints that we're working with. Okay. First, we have uh, constraints on just the absolute values for the uh, for the diameter and the and the uh, and the thickness. Let's we'll start with the diameter. So the diameter should be greater than two centimeters. Uh, but less than 14 centimeters. And so mathematically, we can express that as two centimeters less than or equal to D, less than or equal to 14 centimeters. I'm being a little bit lax here. So remember, you know, remember we talked last week, there's a standard form for the, for the constraints. Uh, I'm just putting it in kind of informal form right now, just, just to kind of uh, save a bit of time. So for the thickness, the thickness should be between 0 0.2 centimeters and 0 0.8 centimeters. All right, so these are fairly common. So, you know, in most optimization problems, you're going to have an upper bound and a lower bound, uh, you know, constraints. So that's, that's basically what these are. We set an absolute limit at the top and an absolute limit on the bottom on the basically permissible values for, for these. Okay. Uh, but oftentimes, you know, you'll you'll have other constraints as well, right? Um, and when you when you kind of say it out loud, it's it's kind of obvious. But you know, another constraint that that this column has is that it shouldn't break, right? And so it shouldn't buckle, it shouldn't kind of crumble underneath the weight of that it's uh, under. Just like any good structure, it has to be structurally sound. Okay. And for a column like this, you know, you, there's actually a, a couple of different sources or a couple of different ways that this um, um, that this column can fit. And so one way that it can fail is that you can have just uh, just straight up material failure. So material failure, if material failure occurs, that basically means that the induced stress or the internal stress in the column exceeds the yield strength.
So that's another constraint that we have is that, you know, based on the dimensions that we choose for the column, the internal stress within the column should be less than the yield strength. But another another mode of failure um, that's 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 quite common for a kind of a, a compressively loaded um, kind of slender element like this is buckle. So here we'll we'll keep we'll keep it fairly simple. I, I know buckling is kind of a pretty complex phenomenon. But uh, the way we're going to define buckling failure in this case is that, you know, buckling failure will, will occur if the internal stress exceeds the buckling stress. So those are two more constraints that we that we have is that you know the internal strength has to be less than the yield strength and the internal stress has to be less than the buckling stress. Okay. So it's a little bit, I think maybe a little bit confusing the way I wrote it, but you know, I, the way I wrote it is that these are our constraints. Okay. And we'll we'll put them in mathematical form a bit. All right, any questions on, on this so far? Okay. All right. So let's 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 go from here, right? So we 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 don't we ha we haven't written our objective function yet, but I think you know we'll we'll kind of tackle kind of one thing at a time. So let's let's take our constraints and let's sketch uh, let's sketch out the um, the permissible region or the admissible region. Okay. But in this problem, you know, we have a two-dimensional optimization, so we can utilize the design space, right? So we can make a Cartesian plot where one of the axes is uh, the diameter in this case, and the other axis is the thickness, and then we can kind of plot things on there just to visualize. Thank you. Okay. Let me go ahead and draw our Cartesian axes. So for two-dimensional optimization, we have two -dimensional, a two-dimensional plot here. On the horizontal axis, I'm going to put D. And on the vertical axis, I'm going to put T. Okay. All right. So let's 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 start by sketching out the uh, the upper and lower bounds because those are pretty straightforward. Right. So the lower bound for the diameter is two centimeters, and so let's go ahead and make a line for for that. So we'll say that two centimeters is approximately right, right there. And then the upper bound is 14 centimeters. So we'll say 14 centimeters is right about here. It doesn't have to be exact. You know, of course, if you're, if you're plotting this in like MATLAB or Excel, you'll be able to make much more precise uh, plots. You know, but this is kind of just for, for visualization first. So it doesn't have to be perfectly exact. Especially, you know, when you when you have a two-dimensional optimization, oftentimes your design variables will have different scales, right? So you can see our, our diameter here is you know anywhere between two and 14, but our thickness is much less than that. So I'm gonna sketch this so that you know both both axes kind of are, are roughly visually kind of the, the same, but just know that you know if you were to sketch this in MATLAB, you know, it's it's going to look different because the axes are, are different, different states. Okay, and so for the thickness, our lower bound is 0 0.2 centimeters. And our upper bound is 0 0.8.
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and draw dotted lines here. So with upper and lower bound, you know, you just draw a vertical line or horizontal line um, and just know that, you know, the permissible region is kind of in between. Okay, so we've, we've kind of sketched out this nice kind of rectangle here um, to show our admissible region. Okay? So that means all valid parameter um, sets have to exist within, within this rectangle. So anything outside this region will be, you know, um, invalid. Okay, but those aren't our, those weren't our only two constraints. Right. Um, so we also have constraints on the internals, on the um, material strength, as well as the buckling stress. Okay, so let's let's sketch those as well. So in order for us to plot, uh, plot those constraints, you know, we, we need to basically form a mathematical relationship. Um, you know, um, the variables are, are different, but you know, whenever you sketch something in the X, Y plane, remember the way that you do that is you get a mathematical relationship between X and Y, okay? Um, and so the, the names change here, of course, but you know, the way that we're gonna sketch in this region here is we wanna get a mathematical relationship between D and T based on the constraints. So I think typically, you know, when when you're when you're sketching on a Cartesian plane, typically you do it by solving for y as a function of x. Right? That's how you, that's how you typically plot, right? Um, and so, given a value of x, you plug into a function that gives you a value of y, right? That's how we kind of traditionally understand plotting. Um, but of course, you know, our variable names change uh, change. So, you know, we're going to get t as a function of d. So this is what we want. And so based on our constraint, we're gonna to have to manipulate it mathematically a little bit in order to get T as a function of, of, of D, okay? And then that'll give us a, a, an equation for a line that we can plot on our design space. And so what you're going to see is that after we sketch out these these uh, these last two constraints, it's going to further limit um, the admissible region. And so it's not going to be that full rectangle. It's going to constrain it a, a little. All right. Any questions on this so far? Okay. So let's uh, let's let's go ahead and and do. Let's start with the material strength. That one's a little bit easier because we're given the yield strength directly into the problem.
And so our constraint on the material failure basically says that the internal stress in the column. Has to be less than or equal to the yield strength. You just need to have a mathematical form for this. The yield strength was given to us, and so the yield strength we know from the problem statement is 500 Newton per centimeter squared. Okay. So this is given. We just need to work out a mathematical expression for the. Okay. And remember, this is a constraint on the design variable. So our formula for the internal stress um, should factor in, should have the diameter, it should have the thickness in it somehow. Okay, so we need a formula for the internal stress. So we're getting, we're getting a little bit into kind of, um, you know, solid mechanics, strength of materials here, but it's just, it's just very brief. Right? So remember that the units for stress are, is a force per, um, force per area. Okay. That makes sense because you know it should it should have the same units as yield strength and yield strength is given by force divided by air, right? So our, inter our internal stress should have the same units. If we look at the column, and so I'm going to scroll back up for just a second. If we look at our column here, we can see that there is a, an applied force P that's being directed downwards into the column. And so that force is going to be distributed across the cross-sectional area of the column, right? And our cross-sectional area in this case is going to be kind of the um, the um, that kind of um, concentric circle. So this is going to be our applied force P divided by our cross-sectional area. So let's go ahead and plug in plug in values for these. So the, the, the numerator for this is pretty simple. We can just put P there. Okay. P was given to us in the problem. P was 2,500 Newtons. And for the cross-sectional area, we're gonna, I'm gonna use a, a slightly kind of simplified expression here. Uh, normally, you know, uh, if you wanted to find the precise area, you would take the area of the outer cylinder minus the area of the inner cylinder, and then you just get kind of the area that's in between. Uh, so that's that's technically correct, uh, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to assume that our, our cylinder here is um, very thin walled, and so the cross sectional area is just going to be the perimeter of the inner cylinder. So that's pi times d. And then we're just going to simply multiply this by the thickness, and so it's it's just it's just an approximation of the area. But for a thin-walled, um, you know, structure like this, it, it it gets you pretty close. So the product of the perimeter times the thickness that that's a good approximation of the cross section here. All right. So that's good. So let's go ahead and, and plug everything in. Uh, remember, our, our value for P here is 2,500. Okay. Uh, pi is pi, so, you know, I'm just going to leave it as, as pi. And so we plug everything in, we get 2,500 divided by pi times B times T is less than or equal to pi. Of course, you know, you, you have to kind of double check to make sure that the, that the units work out. Uh, in this case, it, it is because this is, you know, an example I prepared, but, you know, just kind of double check. So remember that 2,500 is given in Newtons. Um, the yield strength was 500 Newton per centimeter square. 
And so this equation only works out if D and T are given in centimeters. Okay, so just, just kind of be careful of, of your units because it can be nice. All right. So let's simplify this. Remember, we want to get this into a form that we can easily plot into our design space. So we want to have T kind of isolated on one side of the equation on, on its own. Um, and then the we're going to put everything else on the other side. Okay. So you can see T is, is in the denominator here. And so we need to get it into the numerator. And so one way that we can do that is we can multiply both sides by T. Don't be scared of the inequality. So remember the, the inequality, you can you can manipulate this algebraically just like just like an inequality uh, relation. You just have to be careful if you're multiplying by a negative. Okay. So if you're multiplying by a negative, remember you kind of you kind of have to flip flip the sign. But we're not, so we're multiplying by a positive t here. Okay. So that's going to eliminate t in the denominator on the on the left hand side. It's going to put t in the numerator on the right hand side. Okay. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this entire equation by 500. Remember, just because we want t, we want t by itself. Okay, so that 500 is going to cancel out with the 500 on the right, um, and we're just going to have T. So this T is going to cancel out with this T. We're going to end up with the T on this side. Okay. And then this 500 is going to cancel out with the 500 on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, we have 2,500 divided by 500, which is just going to be 5. Okay. All right, so if we do that, we get five over I D is less than or equal to T. And then just for, you know, just, just to make it easier for us to plot, let's, let's kind of flip it. So let's put the T on the left and put the five I over D on the right. So we're just gonna, you know, mirror flip this, this whole thing. So we have P is greater than or equal to five over I So this right here is the mathematical expression for our uh, material um, material failure constraint. Any questions on, on how we got to this uh, got this equation here? Okay, cool. All right. So what so what is this expression telling us? And so this this expression is telling us that there there has to be a relationship between T and D in order for our, our uh, material not to fail not to fail. Okay. So the value of thickness, whatever we choose for that, has to be greater than five over pi times the diameter. So we can visualize this, and so you know we can we kind of plot this uh, plot this out. So we come back up to our plot over here. Let me kind of erase this highlighting here. And so if we were to plot this out, so I'm going to use pink to, to plot this out. Okay? We're basically plotting the function t. Let's plot the line first. So we're going to plot the function t is equal to pi over pi for t. And so if we do that, it kind of looks something like, like this. Of course, this is just an approximation. So you can see it kind of looks like the function of one over X. And so that makes sense because we have one over D on the other side, but it's scaled by that, uh, scaled by that five uh, over pop. So this right here in pink, that is the function uh, T is equal to five over pi D. And remember, this is our material failure constraint.
And remember, our, our constraint said that t has to be greater than this. this line, right? So that line there kind of sets the lower limit. Right? And so, in order for our value, in, or, in order for our design to be valid, that means we have to be above this line. Okay, we have to be above this line, but still within the the confines of our uppers and lower limits. So that kind of restricts that restricts our municipal region a little. Bit. Right. And so instead of being this entire rectangle here, we're now this kind of region up, up here. It's like that. And so that lower part of the uh, that lower part of that rectangle now, this is now invalid. And so what this is telling us is that if we, if we were to choose a design, so let's let's choose a random point within this region. So let's say that that point right there is, you know, maybe a diameter. Let's grab it here. Let's say this is a diameter of about three centimeters and maybe a thickness of 0 0.5 and 0 0.4 centimeters. Okay. If we were to choose this design point right here, the, the, the column is just going to fade. Okay? So that, that point right there was in our original admissible region. But once we applied our constraint on the material failure, we now know that that's going to be an invalid point because if we were to just, if we were to choose those values, our column would just fail, it would just kind of break as soon as we apply that. So that's so that's our third constraint. Right? Well, technically the fifth, if you count the upper and lower bounds as separate ones. But that's that's our material failure constraint. All right. Let's kind of some of this here. Okay, so that's good. So now 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 we are restricting our, our admissible region a bit more, but we're not done yet. We still have one more constraint to uh, to handle, and that's the buckling, the buckling constraint. So we're going to handle this constraint in the exact same way we did the material failure. So we're going to, you know, use our equations from solid mechanics um, to get an expression for the buckling stress and the internal stress, and we're going to work at it algebraically until we can get a, a relationship between T and D from that expression. First, we need a mathematical formula. Okay. So this uh, so this constraint basically says that the internal stress has to be less than or equal to the buckling stress. The buckling stress is a threshold where you know if if the stress kind of exceeds that threshold, then the entire column is going to buckle. Um, it's a, it's a simple it's a simplified um, model I guess you can say for buckling buckling is in in fact a lot more kind of complicated than this you have to look at kind of the the, the directions of the stress and so on and so forth but uh, you know this 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 model or this uh, this formulation will, will do for what we have. okay so we we already have an expression for the internal stress and so we can just kind of reuse the the formula for internal stress that we had from the previous part. We know from the previous part, uh, previous part that the internal stress is P, the applied load, divided by pi dt. Okay. So no need to reinvent the wheel. We can just use that same expression there. But what's unknown here is the buckling stress. Okay. So the, the way that we're going to define the buckling stress um, is we're going to take the ratio of the Euler buckling loads
divided by the cross section. So we're not we're not going to go over beam theory. We're not going to re review that. I'm just going to give you kind of the expression for that. Okay. So the Euler buckling mode is given by this expression here. So the Euler buckling mode is pi squared e times the moment of inertia of the cross section squared. divided by the cross-sectional area, which is pi times d times t. So we're given most of the values of, in this expression. So pi is pi. Um, the Young's modulus E is given, was given to us in the problem. The length of the column L is given to us in the problem. Um, D and T are, of course, our design variables. And so, you know, we can leave those in the expression there. The only unknown here is the moment of inertia I. And the reason it's not given is that, you know, there, there's a formula to compute the moment of inertia because it depends on the geometry um, of the cross-section itself, okay? And since we're designing the cross-section, so that's, that's kind of what we're optimizing, we're gonna plug in an expression that involves D and T. So for a thin wall tube, what we have, So for thin wall two, the moment of inertia I is given by I over eight multiplied by D times T multiplied by quantity D squared plus T squared. So you can see our design variables are factoring directly into the, the computation. Of the okay. So if I were to plug all that in, I were to plug all that in, in the numerator here we have I squared times E times quantity I over eight times quantity DT times quantity D squared plus T squared all over L squared. And then this entire thing is divided by the cross-sectional area of I times D times T. Okay, so we can simplify this a little bit. And so um, you can see here that the numerator has pi and D and T, so we can cancel that out with the denominator. So this pi is gonna cancel out with this pi. This D is gonna cancel out with this D. This T is gonna cancel out with that T right there. Okay. So unfortunately, you know, what, what we're given here is a, is a nonlinear equation. So we have, um, you know, both D squared and T squared. Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, just plug in, plug in the values and see what we get. So if we plug in values, remember on the left-hand side, we had our internal stress. So our internal stress was 2,500 newtons divided by pi. E T 
This has to be less than or equal to I squared times E. E in this case was 0 0.85 times 10 to the six. And that's Newton per centimeter squared. Remember, that's the given, that's the given Young's modulus that we had at the beginning of the beginning of the problem. Times quantity d squared plus t squared. Eight. We have the length squared, which is 250 squared. So it's a little it's a little bit of a mess. It's uh you know not not the cleanest thing, um and unfortunately you know I would we would love to simplify this so that we can get it in the same form as our material strength, right? Because ideally we would love to get this in the form of t equal to f of d, right? It would be great to get it in that form just so that we can kind of plot it easily. We could just put it in a graphing calculator. Um, but because of the nonlinearity, so we have t squared, d squared, and d times t, um, you know, that's that's going to be pretty hard to do, okay? So how are we going to get a curve from this, right? So we, we need to get a curve somehow, something that we can plot. Um, well, even though we don't have an explicit expression, you know, the, the values for D and T are implicitly, you know, related through this, uh, through this equation. Okay? So what we can do is we can, we can kind of numerically solve for, relate, for this relationship. Okay? So what we can do is we can plug in uh, various values for D and T um, and then kind of solve those for, uh, or the corresponding values of the, of the other. So essentially, we're going to be plotting this numerically. I will. I will never ask you to do this. You know, I'm just. I'm just kind of showing you uh, what how how this is uh, how this is done. Uh, but this this is a little bit advanced, and so you kind of need to be really savvy with with MATLAB. We're going to do a lot of MATLAB in this class, but this is kind of beyond 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 that. So this is kind of um, I would say more MATLAB savvy than MATLAB skills. Let's say. Okay. So how does this work? So basically, we're going to set you know set say we'll set you know some certain values of d. Okay. So say we're going to plug in two. Four, six, eight, and ten. Ooh, or twelve. And then based on that equation up there, we need to find the value we can numerically solve for the values of t that satisfy that expression. Okay. So for example, if d if d is equal to two centimeters, then the value of t that satisfies this is 2.41. And you can verify that. You can plug in both, both of those values. Uh, D is equal to two and T is equal to 2.41. And you can see that it's the equation is going to be satisfied. Okay. Or D is equal to four. This is, uh, we get 0 0.716. Or D is equal to six. You get T is equal to 0 0.219. For diameter of eight, you get T is equal to 0 0.0926. And for D is equal to 10, T is equal to 0 0.0473. And then finally for 12, you know, we, we get kind of diminishing returns here. So 0 0.0273. Okay. But again, you know, how, how you find those numbers is not is not that important. I'm not gonna ask you to do something like this, but just kind of showing you how that. So what we have here is kind of a, an ordered list. And so kind of a, a list of kind of pairs of points. And so we can plot those points in our design space and connect them using a line.
I will show you that uh, visually in a second. I'll leave it here in case people are still writing. Um, any questions on on how we got to got to this point here? Okay. All right. So let's let's plot these points, and so that's going to be our our final constraint. And you'll see our um, our region here kind of shrink uh, a bit. So I'm come back up here. Mean. Let me use blue. So blue here, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, call it the buff number. And so the buckling constraint, you know, we're gonna, we're plotting it via points. And so it's gonna come up here. Kind of shift this way. And so if we were to connect all these points like this, you get a curve that kind of looks up. So it's close, right? And that makes sense, right? So if, if something's gonna bubble, um, probably its material is gonna fail as well, but there's kind of a, an additional region that's not open. Okay. And so finally, our, our final region, our final admissible region is the region that's above both of these curves and trapped within those right regions. So right here. And everything to the left of those curves, everything that's outside the box, is um, invalid. All right. So now that we have all of the constraints um, kind of visualized in our design space here, um, you know, we can we can actually go about finding the optimal value because now we know where we're operating. So we know we know that we're operating in this space right here in green. Okay? And we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to explore that space and find out how low we can get the cost while still being a valid parameter. OK. All right, so let's go ahead and, and do that. The last thing we're going to do Optimize. Just like we've done with, with the constraints, we're going to do this completely visually. So we're going to be plotting some more lines, but the, the new lines that we're going to draw with the objective function um, are, are going to be interpreted a little bit differently. Okay. All right. So, first thing we're going to do is we need to find a mathematical form for our objective function that uh, incorporates the cost. So cost was our only objective here. So we, we just need to, as long, as long as we satisfy all the constraints, um, you know, we want to find the design that minimizes the cost. So, you know, fairly simple, single objective optimization. Okay. So the cost, the cost for the cylinder um, is going to be based on the material cost as well as a construction cost. So again, you know, usually the objective function is going to be given to you. So you know, I, I and you know, from your guys' perspective, I'm I'm pulling this I'm pulling this equation out of my ass, but you know, um, and just because that's because I kind of am, uh, but you know, um, 
we're not at the point in the class where you have to come up with your own objectives. So now I'm just assume that these will be kind of given to you. Okay. So our cost is split into two into two things. And so we have five times the weight. And so this right here is our material cost. And the other aspect of our cost is the construction cost, which is uh, based purely on the diameter. All right, the first thing we're, we need to do is we need to take this objective function and put it in terms of the design variables. Okay? And so we're kind of halfway there. And so our second term there, the two times D, that's already in terms of our design variable D, um, but we need to we need to put the weight um, in, in the form of our um, design variables. We need an expression for the weight. All right, so the weight, the weight of any object, um, you can compute it based on its density. And so in this case, you know, in this problem, we're given the weight density of, of, the, um, of the material. And so the weight of this is just gonna be the volume of our object. So the volume of our, of our column multiplied by the density. So let's start with the volume. So the volume um, of our thin walled cylinder is we're going to take the cross sectional area. And the cross sectional area of our uh, of our cylinder is pi times d times t. So the perimeter pi times d times multiplied by the thickness, and then we're going to multiply that cross sectional area by the length. Okay. So our volume is given by pi times d times t times l. And then our density, of course, is given to us. That's just going to be. All right. So at this point, we can go ahead and plug in because a lot of these values were, were given to us. Okay. So we're given the density. We can plug that in from the beginning. The length is also a fixed parameter, so we can plug that in. And I'm just going to plug in for pi in this case, too, just to make things simple. Okay, and so we plug all that in, and we plug it back into this expression up here. So we're basically taking our weight, we're multiplying by five, and then we're adding two d to that. And so the end, our cost, is going to be equal to nine point eight two times d times t plus two d. So this right here, this is our objective. So our objective function is a mathematical expression of the objective or what we want to optimize over. In this problem, we only want to optimize over the cost. And so our objective function is just a mathematical equation that computes the cost. All right, any questions on any questions on this? Okay. All right, so, so just like we did with our constraints, you know, ideally we would like to plot this in our design space. And just like we did with the constraints, you know, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to get, we want um, a mathematical expression um, T as a function of D, right? So we're going to rearrange this so that we kind of isolate T on one side, and then we're going to put everything else on the other side.
All right, so we're in luck here. So T only T only occurs once in this equation. So it's in that 9.82D times T term. And so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna subtract 2D from both sides. We have cost subtracted uh, minus 2D and equal to 9.82D times T, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by 9.82 times D. And so we do that on the left-hand side, we get cost 2D divided by 9.82D to T. And so with just, a, with just a couple kind of simple algebraic manipulations, we have something that we can plot our um, curves. So actually, first thing, let me do, let me, uh, let me kind of uh, redraw the um, design space down here just to make it, you know, just so I don't have to keep scrolling up. Two centimeters, this is 14 centimeters. Uh, Rains for T or is there two centimeters? The seat. And we have two constraint curves. And so we have the material strength constraint like this, and then we have the buckling constraint like this. Okay. So remember everything, everything on the right side of this uh, rectangle, these are this is our valid region here. And so any design that we uh, that we find, or any about any um, combination of D and T that we find, has to be within that region there in order for it to be a valid design. Okay, but not only do we want to be in this region here, we want to make sure that the cost is minimal. And so ideally, you know, there should be a single point or a single point within this uh, within this region here that is not only valid but also has a minimal cost. All right, so how are we going to find that? How are we going to find the, the point within that region with the minimal cost? Well, we have our objective curve here, right? So we can we can use this and we can we can start plotting values, right? But you might be saying, you know, hold on, you know, how are we going to plot values for this where we don't have anything for the cost at this point, right? I kind of just have it as a variable. Well, you know, let's let's try plugging something in for that and let's see the curve that we obtain. Okay? So first. Let's try plugging in cost is equal to 50. Okay. And then let's plot that curve. Use it, let me use a color other than green, so it's not green on green. So this will be uh, purple. Okay, so if we were to plot that, and again, you know, this is this is most easily, probably most conveniently done with the graphing calculator. So we'll get a curve that kind of looks something like that. So in purple here, purple here will be the curve for cost is equal to 50. So 
say dollars. Um, sure, dollars. Dep it depends on the units. I think for our objective function, we'll say that it's um, yeah, we'll say we'll say that it's dollars. Okay. So what do we see here? So what is what is that curve telling us? So if we if we wanted to set the cost at fifty, right? What this what this is telling us is that there are a lot of points here that are valid. Okay. So you can see here that our cost is equal to fifty curve intersects the valid region um, a lot. Okay? What this is telling us is that it is possible. We have valid designs cost is equal to 50. Okay. And the reason being is that that curve there for cost equal to 50 mm -hmm. is intersects the valid region. Okay. So that's good. So at the very at the baseline, you know, we, we can construct this um, column with, with 50 books. Reason I hesitate is that you know it's it's going to cost more than fifty bucks usually to build a you know two and a half meter tall column. You know, I think I did pretty good with the numbers up and up until then. <laughs> okay, but let's see if we can do better, right? And so you know we have this baseline at fifty bucks. So let's 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 try to set the cost as equal to forty bucks, and we'll plot that curve. Okay. Number two, set cost forty bucks into objective function so instead of 50 we're going to plug in 40 into this equation here okay so we have 40 minus 2d divided by 9.82 times d okay and we're going to plot that curve if we plot that curve we get this guy right here. So in the pink right here, I have cost is equal to 40, 40 bucks. Okay. So that's good. So, you know, just, just like the uh, cost equal to 50 curve, we can see that our, our, 40, uh, our 40 cost curve here intersects the value. Okay. So what this tells us is that it is possible um, to get a design that costs 40 bucks and still be valid. And that's even better, right? Because you know, if 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 we're able to get a valid design that costs forty bucks, that immediately invalidates the the fifty cost, right? So, because why would we why would we make a design that costs fifty if this if this chart here is telling us we can get a design for forty as well and still be valid, right? And you can kind of see that you know, starting from the cost equal to fifty curve, our 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 curves are starting to move to the left, okay? And so that kind of begs the question, you know, what if what if we decrease the cost even further, right? Now I'm running out of real estate here, but I'm gonna draw one more curve here just just because we're almost out of time. So let's see what happens when we push it too far. So let's set the cost as equal to twenty bucks. Okay. I set the cost as equal to twenty bucks and then plot. It. So we're gonna plot the function t is equal to 20 minus 2D divided by 9.82. Right, just plugging that cost into our objective. Okay. And so if you plot that here, what you're going to get is a curve that looks something like So our 20 cost curve is on the left right now. <clears throat> so what is that curve telling us, right? 
So, you know, we're, we're able to use our objective function to, to plot this objective curve, but you can see here that there's no intersection, right? So there's at no point on the, on the blue curve there does it in, intersect our valid region, okay? <clears throat> so what this is telling us is that, you know, while it would be, while it would be great to get a, um, to do a construction that costs 20 bucks, we're not able to do so and still produce a valid design. So our, our design space here is, is telling us that, you know, we're, if, if our budget is 20 bucks, then we're not able to produce a valid design at all. Okay. So that means the optimal curve here or the optimal cost is somewhere between 20 and 40. Okay. And so you can keep repeating this. And so you can kind of keep doing this and plugging in different values of cost. Eventually you're going to get kind of a Goldilocks, um, you know, a Goldilocks curve. Use rainbow for it. And so your Goldilocks curve will be kind of like this. And so it'll be at the very tip of that valid region, but it's going to have the minimal cost um, associated with it. And so if you want to, if you want to try this at home, I, I do have the, uh, I do have the, um, the actual cost here. And so the optimal cost in this case is equal to twenty six dollars and fifty cents. So if you want to try this out in MATLAB, or if you're trying to try it out in Excel or in, in your graphing calculator, you kind of verify that that's where the that's where the cost, uh, optimal cost is. And so that's going to give you value of E is equal to 5.44 centimeters. T is equal to 0. All right, any final questions on this before we wrap it up for today? Okay. All right. So that's all we got time for today. I, I apologize for going over a bit. Uh, so this that was kind of your first taste of optimization. Obviously, what we did today, this was kind of a very inefficient process, uh, kind of drawing it out. But you know, I, I wanted to start with this just to kind of visualize. So when we come back on Thursday, we're going to start to go over what I call classical methods. Um, those are a little bit more um, a little bit more efficient ways of optimizing these. Okay. All right. So thank you guys for coming today. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I will see you on Thursday. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, we only have Yeah, that's called um, yeah, right. So this, so this is like um, like a basically like a an analog. You so you me here that we have a of course, you know, you like it like What you're describing is something called discrete optimization. Or optimizing your discrete values. We're not going to, we're probably not going to get to this class. I'm just trying not to get to, but that does exist for for that exact reason. I have a habit of just consuming so many like tech reviews and seeing all the things that are out there. I'm like, yeah. So if if you want to do this purely, like just the bottom loops, and eventually, no, like all of them are cool. But just the like, wow, but there, there are more efficient ways to do this. This is just this is just kind of a thing person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't spend Thursday. That's not bad because I know those. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just kind of just I can. I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk. Literally, I told me. Hit me. And I will. Let me get your. I swear I'm not. So you need this one. I'm sick. It's like if you turn around, it's like someone will walk my elbows. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh wait. I literally had coffee and then you can eat Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I couldn't talk it. And I was like, I cannot eat before the last I'm like, 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 I'm like,
try to get to the right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about Thank it. Thank you. 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 That's right. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, I'll talk to you. I'm going to start your love now, Christine.